<laughs> so it's just me and Samantha tonight, but she has a story she wants to tell. Or I'm um, glad to hear. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll start again, if you don't mind. Okay. Sure, sure. So you were writing poetry and you kids so, found a spyglass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so spyglass is an AI detector that I learned about from um, just this article in um, Hypopotamus. Hypopotamus. Mm -hmm. And um, it is supposed to, like I said, detect AI works. And mm -hmm. um, it's so the students were writing their own poem a playground generated poem and then they had to find a, an actual published poem um, all from a love letter type perspective from characters in the great gatsby so and, all three of them had to be from characters in the great gatsby well they all had to have the same theme okay yeah and i gave them like tom buchanan could write a love poem to tom buchanan because he loves himself you know so they kind of had some fun with it um so as some of them were kind of what, working what grade are these students this is 11th grade 11th grade okay yeah sorry so to as, keep interrupting oh no that's fine um yeah. as some of them were working and some of them were reading i looked at this program and i um showed the kids you know hey let's take a look and see what this does and the conversation was meant to go in the direction of um you know, what what determines human versus AI? And we were just going to try and find some patterns, maybe some syntax, maybe some word choice. Um, so I took a student's poem and put it in there and it requires a hundred words and he didn't have a hundred words. So I made two extra stanzas right there in front of the students on the fly. And we- From, from AI or? No, just from me. Just wrote it. Yeah, okay. I just made it up right there. And we hit the button for analyze. It said he was 93% AI. <laughs> oh, really? And but so he some, actually wrote it. Yes. And <laughs> some of the students were like, oh, okay, did you really, or did you just put in two playground poems and just say that one was yours? And he was like, no, no, I really didn't. So I took the example poem that I personally made, um, also not a hundred words, so I had to make up a few extra stanzas and boy, were they terrible by the end because I was just like running out of ideas. I didn't know what else to say. Hit the AI, analyze. It said 99% AI. So your theory is this isn't working. Well, so. that's kind of the scary idea. So yeah. we put in one of the poems from the playground and it said 99% AI. We put in another poem from a different student that was um, barely at a hundred words and it said 0.3% AI. So she was human. <laughs> so the, the idea was, holy cow, if um, universities are using this, high schools are using this, and then there's no way You're to gonna accuse kids of doing things that they haven't done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's no way to prove you didn't do it. There's, there's, or at least well, I you did do it. Well, right, exactly. Um, right. I, I can't think of a way. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, we all immediately recognize the irony that AI is misidentifying AI and people are trying to be authentic and then they're being accused of not being authentic, you know. I would love to see these poems. That would be fun. Do they? Yeah. What yeah. Are the, do you publish them anywhere, anyhow, or how do you do this? Um, no, this was just for their assignment. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, um, it definitely brought on, like I said, a kind of a scary conversation, you know. Um, scary because AI, people will distrust even real things. Yes. And, and, then, yeah. and then, you know, a student is caught cheating. Well, I didn't do that. Or a student yeah. is caught um, you know, being accused of cheating and then to say, well, I didn't do that. Then, you know, I don't know. And like I said, there's no way to prove, you can't prove a negative. You can't prove that you didn't use it, you know? Yeah. It's funny. So I just, um, I don't know. Like I said, it's a very interesting conversation that, um, a lot of people right now are having the conversation of how do we stop the AI plagiarism. Um, so I think there should be a conversation of how do we ensure accuracy <laughs> in AI play. How do we stop the stoppers? That's right, it. right. Hmm. So um, yeah, I'm I'm interested cool. to see where that kind of thing goes. Have you um, 
go if you don't want to go here, it's fine. But have you um, played with any other um, AI than Playground, or um, are you just mining that for, one as far as you can go? Like for, I started looking at um, AI twenty one, for example, which uses another another lar large language model. Okay, it uses Jupiter. It's not Jupiter. I'm gonna be sound dumb here, but anyway, yeah. Um, so I, I have, haven't gone very far into it. But have you looked at other models yet? Or not for text one? generators because I I don't I don't know of many. But I have looked okay. at other um, image generators. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Crayon, C R A I. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that one to you last time, but mm -hmm. that was um that was a good one, especially if the students don't have access to. Um, open AI, um, mm -hmm. but, um, and it gave some very interesting images as well. So um, and they wouldn't have access because they don't have a um, for or, yeah. No, for whatever reason, when they signed up, they tried with, I think their school email and it didn't work. So then they switched to their personal email. And I think because they use two emails, it's the accounts are kind of mixed up. Um, so I'm still trying to problem solve some of that. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So how have you thought further about how we all might work together more? Um, <laughs> yeah. I want to get, get you on Youth Voices because <laughs> the, 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 the example you just gave there, if they could publish those three poems and we could like see them, it would inspire other people. Oh, what a good idea. I mean, that's the whole idea of Youth Voices. It gets ideas out there. Yeah. Through, through um, the kids' work, right? So um, I would like to, I, I have a group that I'm, I'm definitely trying to target with um, that very thing. Um, so, yeah, if we could even look at, you know, how we can, um, you know, just get a, it, it's a, it's a group of only uh, maybe 12 um, that I'm, I'm kind of thinking to start with um, for, it's a, an intervention class that I think would really enjoy something like that. What's intervention mean? Um, intervention for reading and writing. Okay. Um, it's mostly for the reading, but I, I think there's just so many applications, you know, obviously with the writing as well to pair those together. And, and they use AI or? Um, yeah, well, I would, I do um, for their interventions. Yeah. And I just assume. kind of some of the new ways that we've been working. Yeah. What are some of the other new ways you've been working? I mean, just pick oh, up on that I, I just mean, yeah, yeah just in, in general, you know with looking at some of the, the things that are coming out. Um, one thing that we have been, we as a course team for um, planning have been looking at are ways that we can use how this playground, um, you know, the chat GPT, how, how that data set is collected and almost dividing it up so that we can make separate tasks um, for the students. And even though they're not using the playground or they're not using ChatGPT, they're doing some of the steps, I guess, that go into the model and they're doing it with their own text set. So for example, um, you know, ChatGPT pulls from, um, you know, a billion, whatever, you know, a billion different sources. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where it gets its language model from. So to make something brand new. So we have the idea of, and we're going to try this out because we obviously haven't done it yet because um, it's <laughs> all brand new, but um, we're going to mm -hmm. try taking for an example, like make a love poem and we give them a prompt and then give them 15 different love poems. And then they have to take one complete line from each poem. So we're not changing the data set source or the data, the data itself, but they have to take one line from each poem and make a new poem. So to synthesize, and we will definitely have like, conversation about plagiarism and stuff like that. But the idea is, um, you know, looking at theme, evaluating word choice, looking at structure, um, looking at, you know, 
development of of a theme, like how do you want to do that? And then to say, if you have to use only one line and you don't get to modify the line from each source, like how would you do that? I think that would be really great analysis and I'm excited to see it. And all of it came from the idea of this is how chat GPT works. So instead of even just using it, now we're using the concepts of, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for the students. So I'm excited to do that. <laughs> Just so it, it reminds me, that, uh, not, not exactly the same, that does sound true, but he, he took um, every word from a uh, commentary he was writing and he put them in alphabetical order and gave them to ChatGPT and said, write an article about using all of these words. And it didn't exactly use all of the words he said, but it really put together an article almost the same as he had written. Wow. Right? Isn't okay. that like, That'd what's cool. going on there? <laughs> That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so so what you're thinking about, though, is sort of like digital humanities, right? Some sort of stati statistical yes. analysis of, of the words or the poems in this case. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I think that'll be an, an interesting way to address poetry instead of here's a poem, let's analyze it, you know, um, mm -hmm. which I could do all day, but the kids not always are as interested in poetry as I am. You know? so. Right. so do you want to get real about um, getting those 12 kids in? Why not? Do yeah, that would be great. All right. So what I, what I eventually need, and this is, this is fine to have this recorded because there are a lot, they're like, not a lot, but I get like two or three teachers kind of asking about this every once in a while, every, every week or so. Um, so what I need is just a list of their email addresses and their first okay. names. We don't use last names anywhere. Okay. Um, now, how, how, these kids are high school? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now These yeah. are all freshmen. These would be nice. So whatever, whatever permission your school wants you to get from parents, there is a permi per permissions I saw. Mm -hmm. letter. Okay. okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't but if they're older than 13, we're, we're sort of like, that's just up to you. Um, okay. You know, younger than that, we get concerned. Um, so there's that process of just, I mean, and I, I can show you how to do it, but it's easier just for the first one, just send it to me. And okay. I can I can bulk upload them that way. Okay. Right? And there, they'll be in. Um, I did I did show you stuff. We didn't talk very long, so. Did I show you? Did I show you how we're using it on Youth Voices? Or I did a little bit, right? You did, yes, yeah, okay. and that's that's why I was like, wait, this would be great for that group specifically. Okay. Um. So, what do you want to think about or look at? I mean, you can. Um, yeah. Well, I I don't know. Like, um, what what new things? You said that you've talked to some other teachers. So, what new things have you, um, mm -hmm. come across? Well, can, let's uh, let me show you one thing. Let me show you then what we're. Come on up with me. Or let me see if I this. I want to try this. Wait, can I request that you follow me? Okay. Yes. And you got a request. I did. Yes. Okay. And you're following me. Oh, cool. I didn't <laughs> know that works. Okay. Uh, where am I going now? Wait, wait. Okay. It's cool. Yeah, it makes it makes it. Easy. All right. So here's. Uh, let's just. If you click on, or I, maybe I'll just open this up. This way. Maybe I'll just share screen. And it's going there now. But you can click on that too and find um, this article that a few of us have been just, I, I started, but other people have started thinking about it. I, I don't know if you know now comment at all. But, no, no. Okay, so let me introduce you to that first. Are, do you do any social annotating, like mm -mm. online annotating with kids? Okay. So. Oh, I didn't share my screen. I'm just talking out of my <laughs> face. Well, I pulled, yeah, I was able to pull up the article. Okay. So, 
at some point you can join there and, and join in. It's it's everything everything I do is free, by the way. Don't worry about any of that. So just um, present a window. And where is the one I want? Yeah, yeah, great. Um, okay, that was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Why do I always do it wrong? First, um, entire screen, screen, no, window. Oh, I see why I did it wrong. That's better. Okay. You know, you, you can make this screen bigger. Yeah. So yeah. you can see it. Okay. And I'm on one screen today, so I'll have to toggle. <laughs> and now I'm going back. Okay. So um, what... I, I took this over, oh, I don't know, um, by now, four or five years ago from a, a guy who, Dan Durenberg, who created a um, a site where you can upload text, um, images, and videos, and then you can you can annotate all of that, right? And what's nice is that the, the kids can see each other's annotations, right? Um, so... Um, I could go to one that's actually happening now, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's go here. So, um, Chris Sloan's kids out in Salt Lake City. Chris has a parent-teacher night tonight, so he can't be here, but he would often is here. So they're reading Henrietta Lacks, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Just to show you very briefly, if it's an image, which this wasn't, isn't that terribly interesting, you can highlight like a section of the image, and then and then write about that section, and it ends up over here on the left side. Nice. All this all this introduction has an AI connection here in a second, but then as you're reading through, you can go like, oh, let me see what Grace B wrote or what she's writing about. You can click on her comment and it goes to the comment. Nice. So you can kind of see what's going on. I don't see a lot of replying back and forth yet on his, but you, you can, you can, re any of these can reply and, you know, tree out like a, like a discussion board. But it's different than a discussion board in that it's, um, well, it's a little more interactive. Yeah. It's connected to it's it's in context of the work, right? The work mm -hmm. is there and as well. So, all of that to say, um, what we've started to think about with AI is what if we created these bots, right? Um, so your feedback on this would be really interesting to think about. So with with literary theories to start with, but there could be any kind of bot. Um, and oh, I'm, the word bot is, we're not being very scientific about that, right? but they're just, what well, I'm waiting for my library to come up. Mine's so big, it's a bit of a problem, but it, it'll come. But let's say you were reading something and you wanted to have a feminist perspective, right? And you, someone, someone, either you or somebody else has created that feminist perspective you could give it a name or not. I, I'm, I kind of don't want to, but that's an issue. Um, then instead of you commenting, you could ask the AI to comment on the text, right? And it would come up just like a comment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be a really good way to start conversation if the students are unwilling or hesitant, you know? Right. Um, right, and so pe so people have teachers use what they these lenses um, to think about. And if I babbled about this last time we talked, I apologize if I'm repeating. But um, Deborah Ackerman or Appleman um, came up with. She, she has kids look at 10 different literary theories. So like a Marxist perspective, a, a, a 
critical race theory perspective she hasn't done yet but um um our reader response perspective uh the, you know etc different literary theories that kind of help you understand the text from a different perspective mm -hmm. and this would in theory do that too um I like that idea. I like the, I like the idea of it opening doors that they didn't know were even available. You know, and we're thinking that um, what's interesting about it is that if we can, and and there's a, a tech guy who I work with on the site. I'm not the tech guy, <laughs> um, and we have to ask him if he can do this. Like, can he bring what? AI does, let's say on the playground, and pull it into a comment, because then the actual students on that text could respond to it, right? Mm -hmm. So AI becomes a dialogue more than a knowledge producer, right? Um, which I think would be interesting as well. Just trying to see if I can see a... Oh. I like that it would do that for any yeah. kind of text as well. I think that's really important too. Right, text or or image or video too. Mm -hmm. It's a, you um, with the video. You hit you hit. I want to make a comment. The video stops. You make your comment. It gives you a timestamp. It's mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of cool. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm circling around trying to open a document. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Right. You see low. Inf the influence of technology here. Mm -hmm. So I, this is the first time I, I'm looking at this document. Oh, she had them respond. So yeah, you can see how sometimes there isn't a, a real dialogue that happens. And it would be cool to be able to say, OK, I've invited this Marxist to the conversation. I'm going to click on this sentence right here. And instead of me responding, the Marxist is going to respond, right? Or the feminist is going to respond, yeah. or the yeah. structuralist is going to respond, or the conservative politician is going to respond. Um, just to, and and I'm just saying all the stuff that's in that, that um, document. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just kind of brainstorming, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going now to my profile just to say and. I, again, I, the, my tech guy, I want to get this in order, like clear before I go to him. But um, everybody has a profile. So if you could create a profile and then there's this little bio box. Mm -hmm. So if you, in the bio box, you could describe what that person does and, and how they respond to text. That becomes a prompt, I think. Does that make sense? I think mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. it, it goes out to GPT-3, and then GPT-3 just needs to be able to send it back and then get it into the, the comments. Into the program. I, yeah. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> there's got to be a way it works, right? I feel like if you could tap into that, like that would be a really cool application. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking to people who use now comment about this and talking to you about it and just, and then eventually we have to get the tech people involved. Do you think the person you are in touch with at open AI would be interested in thinking about this with us too, or. Um, I, I don't see why not. I don't, um, mm. if, you know, if they're looking for, um, you know, I guess even different avenues for, channeling it um yeah i do know that they just opened up because i got a notification when i signed in that they are you know going premium now so you don't have to worry about um being overwhelmed or peak hours so <laughs> on on chat gpt right mm -hmm. right um all right so so for example um this is my bio and there's just like a bio box. And I think as long as that description, anyway, I'm, I'm sure he could work that part out. Mm -hmm. But anyway, 
but there might need to be another box here that would have all the things like how the temperature of the mm -hmm. all the all the settings for AI. Right, right. We need to do that too. So, and what I would love is if these these profiles then can be shared, right? So that somebody could come to this profile and copy it and make it make their own version, right? Yeah, you definitely have some really great innovative ideas for using it. And um, yeah, we'll have to play around with this as well. I think this would, um, the now comment, um, right. and thinking of that intervention class, that would be a really great use for that too. So what are they reading right now, that class? Or are, are uh, they reading read different, different things? Yeah, we read different articles every time we meet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we only get to meet once a week. But Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to um, head out. Um, oh, good. Okay. My husband is, is headed home. He should be here any second. So, um, <laughs> but. Well, um, we're going to touch base again. Meetings. So, so what, what we sort of need again is email addresses and first names, and yes. then I'll get people set up. And um, yeah, you've given me some really great stuff to play <laughs> around with and investigate. So thank you so much. Um, also, I'm thinking just a make this real um if you could do an email introduction to the open ai guy if you don't mind mm -hmm. that would be nice oh okay okay yeah. okay cool. that sounds great all right well thank you That's again and, well, thank uh, you. yeah i'll get you those emails and, and first names that's awesome cool cool talk to you soon all right bye bye